Hey everybody, welcome back to the craft room. I apologize for this here. You guys are sitting inside of a knitting loom and I apologize for my ugly window. <laughs> There's a really nice cool breeze. I think it's supposed to get down to 57 tonight. So yeah, I thought I would hop in here. If you've seen my last two videos, my Tunisian Thursday, I showed you that I was working on another square, actually square number 13, for the Tunisian sampler blanket that I started over a year ago. I haven't actually made a square in about a year, but I was going through my bucket, the bucket that normally holds hats, which there are no new hats, all those are hats from the end of last year, all the new hats are going in a different container for all projects that I've done this year. But anyway, I was going through that bucket and I was like, Notice that I had all these squares in there. All these squares, which I will show them to you here in just a minute. But also, I was looking through some videos I have added, like I said in my uh, Tunisian Thursday video, I have added some videos back to my playlist. Um, hopefully none of them YouTube has a problem with. But anyway, they are mainly all Tunisian videos. There are a few other ones that aren't Tunisian, but I added my Tunisian sampler blanket squares back to that. I noticed there are some missing. I believe I stopped with nine, so I'm missing 10, 11, and 12. But I, trust me, those are complete. I just don't know which ones they are. <laughs> I probably can't tell you what most of these stitches are, but I should have a total of 13 squares total with the one that I showed you that I was working on in my Tunisian Thursday video and then on my bonus video for Tunisian Thursday where I showed the uh, bind off stitch. If you haven't seen those, go check those out. Very informative. I'm not a professional Tunisian crocheter but I've learned a few tricks over the years by watching other Tunisian crocheters and just, you know, preference of how things are made. So let me start with the most recent finished square. This is square number 13, and I will put a link to that project down in the description box below, and you can scroll and find each individual square if you would like to do this. These are simple. There's only been one, I think, out of all of them that I've never done before that I did have a slight problem doing because I'd never done it before, but all the rest of these I've actually done at least once before. So if I can do it, you can do it. It's all simple. It's beginner. This is actually a beginner blanket, which I think is pretty cool. But square number 13 is the Tunisian, Tunisian cable stitch. I kept thinking rib, but that's not right. The Tunisian cable stitch. And actually the reason I quit doing it when I, as I said in a previous video, is because it intimidated me. I have done the stitch before. But I just, I don't know, it intimidated me and I didn't want to do it. I am so glad that I did. It was a lot of fun to do. Not that I want to rush out and make another one anytime soon. But yes, I liked it. So here is square number 13, the Tunisian cable. As you can see, there's a small cable on each side and then a big one down the middle. So that one is complete. And I will show you the rest of these in no particular order because... I don't even know what they all are for the most part or even which uh, stitch pattern they are. I believe this one is probably the Tunisian pearl stitch. This is what this one looks like and all of these squares are like a brown, a blue, or green. There is a couple of like a kind of reddish looking ones and that the one that I just finished is gray so these are all kind of earth tones this one right here for sure is one of my favorites this is the Tunisian full stitch I love doing this one and then this one here this is the honeycomb stitch and then this one here I'm not sure what this one is, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it goes this way. Nope, it goes this way. I don't know what this stitch is, but it's really pretty. 
And then this one. I don't know what this stitch is either. <laughs> it's one of them. But here's this one. Seems like I made a, a washcloth using this pattern, but I can't tell you what the pattern is actually. Maybe it's a knit pearl, knit pearl. I don't know. This is the next one. This one was a fun one to make. I think this is one that I'd not done before. Let's see, it should go probably like that, or maybe this way. Bind off would go on the left. So I believe that's your left. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, here's this one. And I don't actually remember what that stitch is called either. This next one is another one that I can't remember what it is. But it's a cool looking one as well. What's that one? I think that's the only, I got one more of this color and then the full stitch was that color in a green. Here is the other one of that color. This is, oh this is the one I called the Tunisian waffle stitch. I believe this is all done in the return stitch. So it's very open. These make great washcloths by the way. And then this one. Oh, this was a fun one to make. I don't know what the stitch name is, but oh, can you see that? It's kind of dark. There's that one. And then this one, oh, Tunisian simple stitch, piece of cake. We all know what that looks like. And then I've got two more here. This is, no, this was a Tunisian waffles. I don't know what that other one was, but this is a Tunisian waffles. <laughs> This is done in the the return stitch. Yeah, this is a simple stitch done in the return stitch. I don't know what that other one was. I thought it was Tunisian waffles, but... And this is the Tunisian knit stitch, which is a brown, which it looked like it was knitted. So those are my squares. I now have 13 complete, number 14. I checked just a few minutes ago before I started this video, and it's actually the Tunisian bobble stitch. I have done that stitch before. And I actually made a back scrubber using that stitch for Steve. So, yeah, I'm going to grab some yarn. I'm thinking I might go ahead and use that gray so that I've got another lighter colored square on my blanket that'll kind of go with all that. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and use that same gray that I was using for the cable stitch, which would be this gray right here. And the hook size that I'm using, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, is a eight millimeter. That's what it looks like. So yeah, that's my finished Tunisian sampler stitch blanket, or sampler square blanket, square number 13. I have 13 done. I believe I've got up to 16. And then there's extra squares that you could also do but I think I'm going to stop with the 16 at least for now and put these together and see how it looks. So I want to thank you guys for joining me and I will see you in my next video.